and we welcome you to Lima Spartan Stadium for the Division 5 Region 18 semifinals. A pair of teams that have combined to win 122 games all time in the playoffs are set to do battle. It's a couple of heavyweights here as the undefeated Tigers of Liberty Center take on the 11-1 Cavs of Coldwater. Hello again, everyone. Alongside my partner, Miles Holliday, I'm Randy Roberts. Partners, a big one here tonight in Lima. We're looking forward to what should be just a classic matchup. A couple of really good football teams, a lot of history, somehow have never met before, are ready to do battle here tonight. Absolutely. Where else would you rather be than right here, right now, watching two incredible football programs and doing it with the mayor of Northwest Ohio, Randy Roberts. Big one tonight. Let's take a look at the starting lineup. Let's start with the Cavs of Coldwater coming in at 11-1 and on the season. So far in the playoffs, defeated Richwood North Union 41-7. And in the quarterfinals, trailed 3 nothing at the half to Huron before rallying for a 14-3 win. That was an important game, an important member back in the lineup for Coldwater, and that is quarterback Marcel Blazing game. Yeah, absolutely amazing story. Broke his leg. Came in the second half. He's got plates in his leg. He's got screws in his leg. He says, Coach, put me in. He gets in the second half and leads him to victory. How about the toughness there? He was on Barstool Sports, highlighted because of his toughness. That is a great story. That is a tough dude right there. How can you not want to play football for a guy like Marcel Blasingame? Yeah, on the year, Blasingame, 1,358 passing yards, 13 touchdowns, three interceptions. Has added 1,150 yards on the ground with 17 more scores. So a very different look with him in that quarterback spot. Take nothing away from what Braylon Harlem was able to do filling in for him in you know, roughly two and a half games. Well, you know how valuable he is. He's voted the Offensive Player of the Year in the MAC. The MAC, an unbelievable conference. Everybody but one team, and it made the playoffs. Shows you how tough the MAC is. But a guy that really helps this offense go is those Braylon Harlemont, first team All MAC slot player. Randy, he is a guy that is absolutely explosive. He's quicker in a hiccup with the ball in his hands. He can play the quarterback spot. He can run the football. They can throw it to him. He is a dynamic player. And those two guys on the offense, Marcel Blassingame and Braylon Harlemont, do a lot of damage because of the guys up front, how good they are. Evan Homan, a tackle, big fella, number 72. First team all MAC offense and defense on the line of scrimmage. This is a solid offensive team. Let's take a look at the defense uh, of the Cavs. And they've got some uh, playmakers there, starting with a very good linebacker in Sam Obringer. Oh, Sam Obringer. He's got those Mike Singletary eyes. He is one intense dude. He will dissect a play quickly. Sam uh, leads the team with 106 tackles and 10 tackles for loss. They are good up front as well with Evan Homan, who is a tremendous defensive player with six sacks on the defensive line. Keep an eye on him. It'll be interesting to see where they line him. Mark Bruins, the defensive coordinator for Coldwater, they're going to stem a little bit and try and confuse that Liberty Center offensive line. So watch number 72 on the defensive line, where he's going to line up. It'll help them out to determine how they're going to stop that Liberty Center run game. And we'll talk about Liberty Center in just a few minutes. We've seen the Tigers a handful of times this year. We've been amazed at how much they've been able to pressure with three or just four guys being able to bring guys, uh, send back guys back into coverage. Coldwater uh, just as effective there. You talked a little bit about Holman. Really good defensive end as well, and we'll see him in a Cody Depwick. Yeah, another really good player. This team that can rush the quarterback. 31 sacks on a year, which has led to 10 interceptions. Uh, they have a plus 10 turnover margin. So anytime you're in a plus margin of turnovers, a plus 10 like that, that leads to short fields, that leads to touchdowns. Explains why Coldwater is sitting pretty at 11 and 1. And how about the safety, kind of the leader of that secondary? in Blade Busher. Yeah, Blade Busher, another guy that is very opportunistic in the secondary. The thing I like about him, Randy, is he can play the ball in the air, but he can also come up on run support. He can really be an extra guy in the box to stop the run game. All right, let's turn our attention now to the Tigers of Liberty Center coming in at 12-0, number one seed in the region, while Coldwater comes in at the number four. Take a look at the, their playoff run. Defeated Port Clinton in the opening round 61-20. And then real impressive uh, in the quarterfinals of the game that Miles and I saw. They absolutely hammered Liberty Benton 41 to seven, a game that really didn't even sound that close. Yeah, 41 to seven, we were watching. It could have been easily 60 to seven. They absolutely dominated that from start to finish. That was a Liberty Benton offense that we saw the week before that was highly explosive. And then all of a sudden, oops, we have to play Liberty Center. And the physicality was just 
all one way with the side of Liberty Center. Yeah, the Liberty Benton offense, their, their total just simply cut in half from what they did against Archibald the week before. The Liberty Center ground game, uh, 302 yards. Colton Cruz, the leader there with 134. Matthew Orr with another 85 combining for five touchdowns. Yeah, the, the thing that is absolutely insane, and you go back and you look again, 7.84 yards per carry. That's just not one player for Liberty Center. That's their average as a team, and they've almost ran for 4,000 yards as a team, 3,717 yards. And their defense, Randy, only gives up 584 yards rushing for the year. Absolutely insane numbers. It is a dominant front five and really good running backs for Liberty Center. And it is not just uh, one-sided. They do throw the ball a little bit. Zane Zider effective once again, six of eight passing, 95 yards, and his touchdown. But again, just kind of they, they run, and then everyone comes up, and then they hit you over the top. And that's been the name of the game for the Tigers the last couple of years. Uh, Zane Zider, first team all NWOAL and really one of the most improved players in that league. Uh, from a year ago, his ability to make things happen with his feet and his arm, a second to none in the NWAL. Think of how many times we've had them this year where he's turned a third and 10, a third and eight into a first down mm -hmm. by scrambling, getting out of the pocket or attacking the edge. The thing that is so good about him is he's explosive. Once he makes that first step, he carries it for 10 yards in a blink of an eye and he makes great decisions. If the throw's not there on the perimeter when he's rolling out, puts a foot in the ground and turns it into positive yardage in a hurry. Let's talk a little bit about the defense of the Tigers. Those First three names you see there on your screen in that starting lineup, they're the three that do a lot of the damage. Owen Box, Landon Bachman, Seth Navarre. They'll rush just the three and put a ton of pressure on. They sure did. A week ago, they dropped eight continuously. Once in a while, it would bring a fourth man up, but that really befuddled that Liberty Benton offense because they were used to seeing open spaces. All of a sudden, all they had was they hit, throw a hitch, and they let them complete the hitch. But those guys in the back end, Klein, Zider, Cruz, Zacharias, and Chapa, what they do when the hitch was completed? They came up and thumped you in a big way. This is a real physical defense, and it's predicated on the amount of work that Box, Balkman, and Navarre do up front. They harass the offensive line when they throw the football, and they will stifle the run game. This offensive line for Coldwater, they're going to have to bring their best game tonight. Yeah, Landon Cruz with another interception last week for the uh, Tigers. Kind of leads that secondary, but as you said, there's a lot of bodies. They're kind of left on an island, and they've done a really good job this year. Yeah, it's a team that's picked off 17 passes this year, seven by Landon Cruz. He had a big one in the first series a week ago against Liberty Benton, really set the tone. Liberty Center, they are physical in the secondary. They are physical in the linebackers. They are physical up front. Guess what? They're physical on defense. All right, let's get to everyone's favorite part of our uh, pregame. Let's take a look at some keys to the game. Miles, let's start with the uh, fourth seed Cavs of Coldwater. Well, Randy, let me ask you, would you rather be the hammer or the nail? Be the hammer. To be the hammer. I was at practice this week, and the defense for Coldwater, they were saying, hammer to the nail, hammer to the nail. They better be the hammer, because if they're the nail tonight, they're going to be thumped in a big way by Liberty Center. They like to be the hammer. Number two, scrape over top. This is a run game for Liberty Center. If you chase it from behind, try to split gaps from behind a running back, you're not going to get there. So avoid coming through a gap on the backside. When, it's, when you think it's there, you're not going to catch these running backs. Scrape over top. you got to make sure that you're scraping over top so he can make tackles. Sam Obinger, he's going to do a good job of that. And then number three, let it fly. Coach uh, Otten was at practice. They are throwing vertical a lot, buddy. They're going to have to make some big passes, and they got their guy back to do it. They got the big quarterback, Marcel Blasting game. He throws a very good deep ball, Randy. Look for him to try to hit some slot fades early in this game. How about some uh, keys to the game for the top seeds, the Tigers of Liberty Center? Hey, bullies must bully, right? This is a team that's been a bully all year long. Stay being the bully. you got to bring your physicality. Remember last year they made a deep run into playoffs because they were out physicaling people? Same thing. Bullies got to continue to bully. Make blasting game move. This is a guy that is playing with a broken leg. Make sure you move him in the pocket. He's going to be playing on one leg. Don't let him have a spot in the backfield where he can be comfortable. And then number three, no short fields. This is a team that hasn't turned the ball over much this year. Don't turn it over early in this football game. Give Coldwater a short field. Looking for what should be a good one, the Division 5 Region 18 semifinal. It's Liberty Center and Coldwater. We'll have it for you next year at WOSN. Hey, Randy Roberts, Miles Holiday, back with you here from the Lima Spartan Stadium. Just about ready to go for this Division 5 Region 18 semifinal between undefeated Liberty Center and one loss, uh, Coldwater. 
nice moment here before they got to the National Anthem with this being a Veterans Day weekend. They honored all veterans in attendance. So I would never speak for my partner, but I feel pretty safe saying that uh, I think you'd agree that we want to thank anyone who has uh, defended this great country of ours so that we can do what we do. Yeah, get to play on football Friday on a Friday night. night. Thank you so much for all your service and uh, really cool moment. They had both teams make sure they were on the field before they started the National Anthem. Wanted to make sure they were part of that. Really cool. And now it's time for something else that's kind of fun, huh? That's right. Some football playoff time. Tonight's game brought to you by the colors orange and black. Will be a lot of that. <laughs> well, there's a ton of black on the sideline for uh, Liberty Center. I think everybody that is a Liberty Center fan is definitely here tonight. I think so. Coldwater won the opening toss to first. Liberty Center will get the football first. Deep kick. Chapel with some issues. We'll get this one at the five. Little stutter step, and he's going to get out across the 20. This could have been a lot worse for Liberty Center, but they're able to get somewhat decent field position as we begin this opening drive of the night. And it makes Potcotter miss. Good thing he did, or also would have been stuck inside to 10. Number 24 got down there quickly for Coldwater, but Chapa looked like it was going to be a disaster because he was able to make the one guy miss. He was able to get it over top to 20. So not great starting position for Liberty Center, but still better than what it initially looked like. Yeah, they'll mark it at their own 23. Scoreboard tonight brought to you by the Swanton Welding Company, providing custom welding fabrication services since 1956. Learn more at swantonweld.com. Look to throw on first down. Zane Sider and a little bit of pressure is going to keep this one. He's going to struggle. Just get back to the line of scrimmage. Looks like it's going to be a loss of a couple as a couple cold water defenders will help him get out of bounds. Now, Will Fox, number 64, gets in the backfield, stops Zider from getting to the edge. Try to go play action on first down. Secondary for cold water. Fantastic. <laughs> Keeping her eyes out of the backfield. Watching the receivers come to him. Nobody for Zider to throw, throw to. And usually Zider turns that into plus yardage because of the play of Fox. It's now second down and 14. And he's going to lose a couple. It's going to be second and about 12. Call it back at the 21-yard line. As so they give straight up the middle, they'll go to Matthew Orr. Orr able to get out across the 25. We'll mark him down about the 27. It's going to bring him third down. Yeah, got it. Averages nearly 10 yards per carry. Goes against the leading tackler for Coldwater right there in Obinger. Obinger comes up and makes a tackle. If you're playing inside linebacker on a 4-3 look and you see guard step towards you, you got to blow it up. And that's what Sam did that time. Let's pick up about six on the run. It's going to bring up third and seven from the 27-yard line. See the wing back to the left side. Split backs in the backfield for the Tigers. They'll give two. First man through, Colton Cruz. Cruz will go off the first contact, will move forward in that second effort will give the Tigers the first first down of the night. <laughs> How many coaches in America on third and seven say, you know what, it's a good third and seven play? Let's go dive. <laughs> because of physicality up front and the determined mm -hmm. running of Colton Cruz, they're able to convert a third and seven with a simple dive play. They're able to get out to the 36. He's going to pick up nine. How many teams other than Liberty Center is going to have a fullback that is smaller than your halfback? That's yeah, true, right? It's the way they line up, that one-two punch of Matthew Orr, Colton Cruz. I like the idea though, early in this game, Casey Moeller, the play caller and head coach is boxing in that cold water defense. Zyder in a shotgun, it was the stretch play, trying to get Cruz to the outside. He'll get out across the 40, down to the 41, so good game of five as they continue to move forward. That's kind of a variation of the buck sweep. You get Cruz on the perimeter. The thing about Colton Cruz though, he's, he's physical, but yet he's got enough quickness and shiftiness to get to the perimeter. Good explosiveness to turn a first down into second and five. Liberty Center continue to move here. Seen two minutes already gone by in this opening quarter. How many possessions we get throughout the night? Good crowd still filing in here at Lima. Zyder looking to throw. Thought about that throwback screen. Instead, fires to the cutter coming across the middle. It's going to be Colton Chambers and another first down as the Tigers get into cold water territory. Now, the thing about Zyder that's so much improved from a year ago, his ability to make quick decisions, right? He's going to roll to the right. He can't get all outside the pocket because of the pressure upfield by Coldwater's defense. So what's he do? He settles down, makes a quick throw. And boy, when he makes that decision, he puts it on you in a hurry. Another big conversion for Liberty Center. A pickup of 12 in the pass play. It's another first down. Liberty Center will get into the Coldwater side of the field at the Cav 47. Here's Orr working that right side off that first contact. 
continues to punish forward. He'll get down inside the 40. He'll get all the bodies, get in front of Matthew Orr, getting on white jerseys and pushing them. It is not a good thing when your middle linebacker is making tackles eight yards after the line of scrimmage. The battle of physicality is being won early by Liberty Center. It is a gain of eight, second and two. We did uh, forget to mention our pregame, our officials tonight, Troy Newsom, Stephen Traxler, Ben Kramer, Brian Feeney, Feeney Trent Stout, Trevor Lutz. Second down run, here's Cruz, able to get up over the pile. And it looks like he's going to have another first down, so he'll get to the 35. Yeah, Mason Welch, number 14, the outside linebacker for Coldwater, does a good job of spilling it back inside like he's supposed to, but nobody's there to make the tackle because of the pull work of Liberty Center. They're outnumbering Coldwater at the point of attack. This run game has been proficient all year long so far early on this first drive as well. Eighth play of the drive coming up here for the Tigers. They're at Coldwater 35. Zider will fake the give, keeps it himself, and he's going to get positive yardage. He'll be tracked down from behind, but not until he gets to the 30-yard line. Yeah, watch the block at number 75. He's going to come around right there, Bosselman. Bockelman, he's going to get a piece, and then just pick a guy up and throw him to the ground. That's uh, Curtis Doerr, number seven, that went for a ride by Bockelman. And you see the, our officials for tonight. Try to keep everything in check for this one. And Coldwater adjusting short. Zider looking to throw, fires a bullet. That one's going to be incomplete. Put everything he could, try to get that into the tight window for Chambers. And Coldwater was a little bit short on the outside. Finally adjusted. They had zero coverage everywhere. Had a post in the middle of the field, and Zider has himself a touchdown. He puts a little bit of air on that. Just a little too much on that one. It's going to bring up third and five. As you can see on our Swanton Welding scoreboard, stops clock, 7.47 to go. Opening quarter, first possession of the night. Liberty Center started this deep in their own territory, their own 22. Here comes Zider trying to bounce to the outside. Coldwater defense is going to read that one, though, and hold him. Yeah, Mason Welch comes up. Initially, it looked like he's going to get the first down easily, but the second level arrives in a hurry, led by Welch. Stop Zider short, and no decision about it. Casey Moeller says that we're going to go fourth down and four. Is inside the Coldwater 30, down to the 28. If nothing else for Liberty Center, you've taken five minutes off the clock, definitely flipped the field. Now it looks like it's going to be Buck sweep to the left-hand side. Man going in motion. There's the give. It is Cruz who will work his way through, and he's going to get all the way down to the 20-yard line. He'll pick up eight when they needed about four, and he'll get the first down. Now look at all the bodies coming around, led by number 51, Tyler Lay. Just getting too many black jerseys on one side. The formation dictated is going to be run to the left. You get a lot of bodies in front and give it to a determined runner. Another big conversion for Liberty Center. Yeah, it was Seth Stewart, number 17, the one that was able to finally slow him down. Evan Harlemert also in on that as well. But a big fourth down conversion for the Tigers. Now they will flip their formation and send three receivers to the near side. A heavy side to the left. Zyder looking to run that way. A little stutter step. He's going to be pushed back. Get maybe a yard or so. It's going to bring him second down. <laughs> well played by Coldwell, right? Everything moving around. Bodies everywhere. And then they put everybody to the left. And Coldwell says, all right, you guys keep moving around. We'll just come find you eventually. You know, on trap there. And along with uh, Obinger. Boy, Obinger, how many times have we called his name already tonight? Second and nine. You see there in your screen from the 19-yard line. Liberty Center already 12 plays deep into this opening drive of the night. Zider with a fake, has room to the right side, cuts up field. Needed to get inside the 10 for the first down. Looks like he'll be down to the eight. It's going to be first and goal for the Tigers. Jack Ebbing's going to show up late, number 22. Or else this is going to be a touchdown. You're going to see him right there get Zider to the ground. Zane Zider. Yet again, makes a big play with his feet for this Liberty Center offense. To pick up of 11. What an impressive way to open up this one. 
Yeah, that fourth down conversion, Randy, that's kind of a soul stealer, isn't it? You have them backed up where you think you're going to get them stopped. Here's Orr straight up the middle. Matthew Orr with the first touchdown of the night. Matthew Orr, just a touchdown machine this year. Gets himself another one. If this was a painting, you'd hang this one on the wall because that is a Liberty Center's offense at its finest, right? Converting fourth downs, converting third and longs, and doing it with the ground, just pounding you, pounding you, pounding you again. This offense is just physicality extreme. 14 plays, 77 yards to get the Allen Davis insurance touchdown. Rosebrook going to attempt the extra point. It is up, and the extra point is good. And our touchdown sponsor tonight, Allen Davis Insurance, your solutions provider specializing in auto home business insurance and more. And Matthew Hoard, 18 touchdowns on the year. He loves it when it gets close to the goal line. That time, another easy one for him. An impressive start to this one. 5-19 to go opening quarter. Coldwater is yet to have the football, and they find themselves down seven to nothing. <laughs> Think about early in that drive, the dive conversion by Cruz on third and seven. Mm -hmm. Really got the offense moving, and then of course the fourth down conversion on the sweep to the left-hand side. Looked like Coldwater was gonna be up to the challenge with physicality early in that drive, but it was dominated by Liberty Center's front five after that. Well, your first key for Liberty Center, bullies must bully. No, oh, they bullied, didn't they, on that one? Yeah, sure, Bockelman getting it done, Box getting it done, and of course, number 51 coming around. He is a tremendous puller. Tyler Lay, you look at him on the field, and he's like five foot six, and you think, oh, that guy's not going to do anything. But when he pulls, he gets on people. They are a technically sound offensive line at Liberty Center. The winner of this one's going to get either Eastwood or Elmwood in the regional final site yet to be determined. We'll know that one more Sunday morning. High kickoff. Short kick. This is actually going to bounce it on the turf. That's going to be a tough football to corral. As quick down on the field is Landon Amstutz will make the stop. Yeah, you got to wonder why A.J. Harlemer let it hit the ground. You want to come up and catch that on the move. You never feel comfortable once the ball hits the ground because you don't know where it's going to go. Plus, especially it threw off the, the timing. Especially in the turf. That thing will just bounce and bounce. Cavs will start their opening drive from their own 24. So Liberty Center started from their own 23, took them 14 plays, but they went 77 yards. So took right around uh, six and a half minutes to do it as well. First down, trouble, pressure right up the middle, and down goes Blazing Game. That's Navarre that gets there first, number 70. Blazing Game barely gets the ball. Navarre gets in the backfield, and oh, look at the leg turn. You need to see that for Blasting Game, because as you know, he was playing with a broken leg. This is a cold water offense that needs to protect him. They went empty, and they could. Uh, Liberty Center defense made him pay. It's going to be a loss of six on the sack, second and 16. Back from the 18 yard line, five receivers set for the Cavs. Blasting Game in a shotgun, looking to throw. Oh, he's got him. Got a man open, just incomplete. Had a man down that far sideline looking for Braylon Harlemert. Just out of the reach, we take a look at the replay. Well, they didn't wait long to throw the slot fade. Here it is right away. Harlemert on the inside, runs the fade. Now, the only problem with it, Randy, is you're running it to the short side of the field, so sometimes you run out of territory. We'll get a chance to draw up that uh, slot fade for you. You'll get a chance to look at it, X and O's with that. But that was a touchdown waiting to happen for Coldwater. Brings up third and long for the Cavs. Trying to set up throwback screen, pass is caught. Short of the first down. As that was Evan Harlemer that came up with that was to take a look at the slot fade. Yeah, that's a slot fade. Usually you run the fade by the outside receiver, but you kind of get a matchup with your good receiver against the safety. Get him to the sideline. That was a play that Coldwater just missed for a touchdown. So picked up five on the pass, a pass play well short of the first down. Be fourth and 11 punt team for the Cavs make their way onto the field. This one will be hit high into the night. Bit of a wobbler, it will hit at the 40, take a big cold water bounce. 
Sends Chaplin back about 10 yards, and he'll be just absolutely laid out at the 32-yard line. <laughs> he laid out his right. That's pot cutter. Miles Pockard, number 24. Remember on the opening kickoff, he got down there in a hurry, but missed Choppa. This time he says, hello, Choppa. I'm going to chop you in half. What a tackle. Big time play. And you remember having the old super ball where you bounce it off the uh, concrete and it go away? And had that, that, that ball hit the turf as well. It looked like, didn't it? That thing went super high. Choppa could have fair caught the bounce, it looked like. But first down for the Tigers at their own 31, second possession of the night here. 346 left to go in our opening quarter. You see it there in our SWAT and welding scoreboard. Split backs in the backfield once again. Quick pitch. And back to I believe that is Matthew Orr. Yeah, 35 Orr carries it. This is a play that they love to run on the goal line. Another good block by Navarre, number 70 coming around. Oberinger makes a tackle, but again, not until he meets Orr about seven, eight yards past the line of scrimmage. This uh, front four for Coldwater, got to start doing a better job of holding guys up at the point of attack. Let their linebacker scrape over top at the line of scrimmage, not in the secondary. It is a gain of seven. It's going to bring up second and three. See a man going in motion. Quick pitch, Chambers with it, trying to move forward. He'll take a big hit. As he gets to the 40-yard line, flag comes in at the end of the play as well. Yeah, this is going to be against Liberty Center. They're going to say that it's going to be creative blocking against Tyler Lay, number 51. Actually, two flags down. One, actually one, and two officials might have seen the same thing as one official now move it to the same spot here. I think everybody saw it. We'll, we'll show the replay. There's no way you won't see it. So it is a hold on the Tigers here as we take a look. Yeah, watch 51. He's going to make contact right there. And then his hands wrap around. And partner, anytime you put your hands up like that, uh, I'm guilty. I'm guilty. I didn't do it. Like how I wrap my arms around Miles to keep him off the uh, post-game buffet. <laughs> Our favorite watering hole following the contest. It'll be second and 13 for the Tigers now. Back with Zider. Zider, big hole across the 40. He's going to have a first down as he will scramble his way into cold water territory. Zider attacks the corner right here. And for some reason, they try to spill it outside. That's Mason Welch, who should have stepped up, number 14, and forced it back inside. But the outside linebacker goes under the block, and that allows the tunnel to develop. And all those black jerseys get in front of Zider. This Liberty Center offense, no down and distance bothers them because they're going to get everybody in front of this run game. Well, just the way you drove it up, a run of 24 by your quarterback on second and long. Well, that unbalanced look out of Liberty Center once again. Two receivers to the far side. Wing back to the near side. Run's going to come this way. And very minimal gain that time. Pass is played extremely well by this cold water defense. That time they kept the offensive lineman off the linebackers, allowed them to have some free time to come up and make tackles. And Will Fox gets involved. You see him running off the field right there. Good job by Will Fox. Loss of one on the run is going to bring up second 11 back to the 49. Very fast opening quarter here, down to 90 seconds to play. That happens when <laughs> you guys see in run game after run game. Here's Cruz, first man through, sidesteps first defender. He'll get down to the 40-yard line, and it's going to be a very manageable third down coming up here for the Tigers. This is one of those plays that they have broke out early in the game on third and seven to get the first down, and they come back to a good coaching by Casey Muller, but it's nothing more than a simple dive. And, partner, if you're a defensive coordinator, it drives you nuts because it's nobody getting the football just a halfback and running by guys. Your defensive linemen are standing up, and all of a sudden they're by. It is really tough for a defensive lineman to see that ball carry as he's on your hip pocket before you know it. Spot of the football is back to the 41, so it's going to bring up third and three. It's time to work the left side, and a good first down there is Matthew Ord will get the call for the Tigers. Yeah, watch the down block, a 62 box. Just absolutely folds the man over top of him, allows that hole to develop, and yet again, another pull leads the way for Orr. So he'll pick up eight on the run. And another first down to the 33-yard line of Coldwater. Defense, 
Zider, again the first man through. This time it is Orr. And Matthew Orr is going to get inside the 30, down to the 29. Give him about four. Second and six. Tigers stay on schedule. That might have been the final play of the quarter. How about this? Whole quarter goes by, and Coldwater only runs three plays offensively. Absolute domination on the offensive end by Liberty Center. Liberty Center in no hurry as he uh, stay in the huddle. Now the coaches call him over. Final seconds tick away. That's the opening quarter. Seven of the Tigers will take a break here at WOSN. Seven up in the Liberty Center with lead over Coldwater after a one quarter of action here from uh, Spartan Stadium in Lima. We can tell you Elmwood with a lead over Eastwood. Seven nothing after one quarter in their regional semifinal played at Bowling Green. So the winner of that one get the winner of this one next week's regional final. If Liberty Center is able to hang on to this lead. I assume it'd be someplace around the Bowling Green area, maybe Lake, perhaps Perrysburg. So you're trying to tell me that you win, you advance. That's how this works, yes. Oh, it is a that? tournament. There is a bracket. <laughs> that is great. Well, Liberty Center looks like they're bound and determined to advance. <laughs> they have ground up some yardage so far. Miles mentioned Coldwater's run just three plays offensively. It's a give on second and six. It is going to be a first down. Colton Cruz, once again, just continues to move that pile forward. Now they love this dive play. They don't even block the defensive end because he's thinking it might be option. Oh, it's not. And all of a sudden, the back nearest you is by you in a hurry. They are picking on the defensive end of that side. And uh, they're trying to get fresh bodies. That time it was Jack Roaring, number eight, who ran by the, the halfback diving on the dive. Gain of 16 sets up a first and 10 from the 13-yard line. Here's the give this time. Cruz with it. He'll move forward. Or check that. It's Orr, excuse me. He'll get inside the 10, down to about the 9. And there's a play that you need by the defense to <laughs> come up with a turnover or something. And if you had one of those cards, you just go ahead, I want to play that card right here, like a draw four or something. And you know, you Coldwater, you better lay it right here. They have to have a play in the worst way, or else it's going to be 14 nothing before you know it. Second, and we'll call it six. See there in the scoreboard. A little hesitation move once again this time. It is Cruz. He is pushed back, but not to before he's able to get maybe a yard. They might move it to the eight. We'll take a look here at the spot. I think they're going to put it about the eight yard line, like you said. Shane Antrop made the tackle number 68. So we'll give him a yard. Good backdrop here from Spartan Stadium. Third and four. It might be closer to five. With the split backs. Coldwater trying to set their line. And they found something that worked as Orr is going to be thrown for a loss. And I actually think that the lining late actually helped Coldwater as Liberty Center wasn't able to find out where everybody was going to be. And it's going to set up a fourth down. We talked about Coldwater needing to play defensively. Get a stop right there. Yeah, Shane Ontrop, number 68, the one that comes up with a big stop. Sets up a fourth down. Liberty Center can get a first down without scoring a touchdown. A little surprise they're not going to kick the field goal. Put them up by two scores, but hey, fourth down has been there down all year long. They're going to roll the dice again. Fourth and six from just inside the 10-yard line. Zider looking to throw, has a man open! Incomplete, it's gonna be broken up. Let's take a look at it. It's gonna try to hit Hammond Tree on the seven route. He's got him right there. But the play at the last second off the right hand. Oh, Curtis Dewar gets just enough. Kind of wrap that right hand around to throw off the stride of Hammond Tree. And Coldwater has been dominated so far, but finds a way to get a stop there, Randy, on fourth down. Might have a chance to get back in this football game now. And the Tigers looking for that uh, kind of gut punch early. Instead, Coldwater giving a little bit of life. They'll get the stop. They'll take over deep in their own territory. Their nine yard line. See in our Swanton Welding scoreboard, nine and a half minutes left to go, opening half. Ball fake, nice move on first down is to give 
will go to Jack Ebbing, and he'll move uh, about a yard to the 10. And a good read by Cruz, number two, flying up. The inside linebacker gets in on the tackle. It is tough to run against Liberty Center. Their front three guys do such a good job of maintaining anything that the front five for your offense wants to do. If you have three guys controlling five, you have a huge advantage. Second and nine coming up here for the Cavs. Blaz again looking to throw, tight coverage, nice one. But they're gonna rule it incomplete as the ball's gonna come out last minute. Now this is a really tight window, trying to hit the curl route. You see the drop by Cruz and then Orr's gonna get underneath it. He's gonna knock it loose after the coverage by Choppa. That is a tough window against three guys. Why are they able to do that? Well, because they get pressure with the three, so you can drop eight in the coverage. It is tough to complete passes against eight guys. There's Evan Harlemer, the uh, intended receiver there. Brings up a third and nine from the 10 yard line. Three receivers, see at the top of your screen. Blazing game instead, is trying to go to the one on one. That pass is gonna be incomplete as it comes to the near sideline. That kind of fluttered out of the hand of Blasting game. You gotta see it right here. He's got his senior receiver on an out route. Was it tipped there by Box? Looks like Box might have got a, a little bit of a piece of it. Evan Harlemont can't come up with a good effort though. And, Another three and out for Coldwater. You do a great job getting a stop on defense. Got to get the field flipped, but Coldwater not able to get a first down. Punt time. Coldwater will punt from their own end zone. Justin Kopp will do the punting. Not a lot of rush straight up. That one just a sidewinder takes a sideways bounce, and it's going to be down at the Liberty Center 30-yard line. Well, you need a huge punt by your punter to flip the field. Unfortunately, he pops it straight up in the air. And that fourth down conversion that got stopped was in distant memory now as Liberty Center is knocking on the door yet again without running a play. I should correct myself to Coldwater 30, so a net of 20 on the punt. Tigers will take over. You see 8.42 left to go. Opening half, great field position for Liberty Center. That one touchdown lead. Zyder, design run the entire way, trying to go to that far side, stretches a play out. He'll get about three, maybe four, before he's finally brought down. You see the shiftiness of Zyder. Blade Busher is gonna come up. He's gonna have him dead of rights right there. The safety flies up, Zyder gives him a little yoy and a double yoy, gets outside. Should have been tackled at the line of scrimmage, but the athletic ability of Zyder turns a negative into positive yet again. Give him three on the run, second and seven from the 27 yard line. Double wing formation this time. Now we'll see one of those wing backs go in motion. Zyder's gonna trip and fall as he gets the handoff. We'll get it out to Orr, who's able to get inside the 25. The problem this Coldwater defense has, Randy, that they are putting guys at the line of scrimmage to stop the run, but the outside linebackers are playing such outside leverage that the inside run game, you're really running against six guys, the four down men and then the two inside linebackers because the outside linebackers are on the line of scrimmage. They can't help you out inside. Three yards on that run, sets up a third and four from the 24. Hand off to the fullback this time, or moving forward, needs the 20. Looks like he'll be about a yard short. I'm assuming with the way he's gone all night, this is an easy decision for Casey Moeller. Yeah, this is well played this time by Evan Holman, number 72. Big fella makes the tackle. Plays the trap really well, gets some help again by Obringer, who's been virtually on every single tackle. He's like Chris Spielman out there tonight, just flying around. Fourth and a yard from the 21. They gotta be sneak, don't you think? Throw split backs. Zyder under center. Well, they're gonna give the or is gonna shed a tackler. See where he got pushed back at. Far officials well inside the 20 to the 19. That's gonna be enough for the first down. Yontrop has him in the backfield. But he has him just by an arm, right? No leverage right there. So Orr just keeps running his feet through the hole. Gets himself the first down. A little bit of surprise, a fourth and short right there. That wasn't the quarterback sneak. Easiest way to get it. But give it to Matthew Orr, the man that loves short yardage. Another first down to the 19. We near the halfway point of this second quarter. 
And keep an eye on the, oh, the short split by Chapa. Gave him a route for a seven, but overload to the right here. Pitch is going to go that way. And the run will get near the 15-yard line as Matthew Orr gets the call once again. As Seth Stewart that comes up from the safety spot, makes a tackle. Not a good sign for your defense, though, when you're calling safeties and corners, making tackles in the run game. Usually that is a plus run for the offense. Gain of three in the run is going to bring up second and seven. Saw the defense coaches for Coldwater trying to come up with an answer to this run game for the Tigers. Yeah, Matt, Mark Bruns, the defensive coordinator, tough night for him trying to figure out how to stop it. Zyder designed run, a little hesitation again. He'll get near the 10 yard line. It's going to bring up third and about two. They'll mark him down at the 11, so run of five. Well, one good thing for Coldwater, they've been in this position early in this game and they came over to stop last possession. Got to find a way again here. Already down to 5-17 in this half and only six offensive plays for Coldwater. Third and a long two for the Tigers inside of five minutes to go here in our opening half. Zyder. In the shotgun, but we'll get a whistle and someone might have left early. And if all start against Liberty Center, that's an unfortunate error because a makeable third and three now is going to become third and eight. That's where if you're the head coach, you want to know who it was because if it's a receiver, you just want to tear your hair out because why are you moving if you're a receiver? Third and short, now becomes third and a little bit longer. We'll call it third and seven from the 16. Same as Swanton Weldon scoreboard. Uh, clock begins to run once again, 4.45 and counting. Left to go before we get to halftime. Might go in the record books as the uh, fastest first half of football ever played. Zyder, stretch play, gets out of one tackler, but he'll be tracked down from behind as he'll get out of bounds. That's Dewar, number seven, that comes up, makes the initial hit. He had the big play on the fourth down stop a series ago. Comes up right there, gets to the leg of Zyder. Anytime you see shotgun, you got to think it's going to be quarterback run. That's what they love to do with Zyder. And sets up another huge fourth down. Partner, if Coldwater can rise up again, it would be huge. Let's see Mark Bruins again getting a call in. We're going to go cover zero. Man to man everywhere. See there on your screen, fourth and three. Looks like they're bringing pressure. You know, they're going to try to draw him off sides, and now Casey Moeller just off your screen going out near the numbers. He's going to take a timeout. And the Tigers will take a timeout here. Coach Moeller calls a timeout. Try to draw. Uh, if you're Coach Moeller, you didn't get it on fourth down last time this close, do you go ahead and kick the field goal here? Make it a two-score game. Mm. Yeah, mm. right? That's... Two-score game, I think, would be big the way your defense plays. Then again, if you if you get stopped here, you, you're going against an offense that's only ran six plays. Your defense will stop yeah, him again. Yeah, I think he trusts his defense. I, I think you're right about that. But you see Coach Muller right there in the huddle. He's uh, wearing the vintage winter cap. How about that? That's Old right. school. I like it with the, the little fuzzy tassel on the back. Coach Muller got some street cred with the fashion. See what the Tigers do. They're going to leave their offense on the field. Now, formation will dictate what they're going to do. If they're in shotgun, it's going to be a sprint out. Let Zyder have an opportunity to decide if he wants to keep it and run or make a throw. Now, they're going to be under center, it looks like. Yeah, it's going to be a – it ran the sweep to the left-hand side last time out of this formation. See, man, go in motion. They do run. It is Orr. He's going to punish everyone. He's going to get inside the five, and it's a first and goal for the Tigers. The thing I like, Randy, is they get set up, bring the motion to the lead it out, and then you get the double block by Bockelman and Box. They get the two trucks on one hand side. That is a tough formation, but they did it quickly, so the cold water defense couldn't adjust. Gain a nine when they needed three on fourth down. It's a first and goal from the three yard line. Zyder this time keeps it himself and he'll sneak his way in 
for the Allen Davis insurance touchdown. Yeah, so like I said, kick the field goal on fourth down. Hey, Coach Moeller, he loves to go for it on fourth down, and he knows what he's doing because he's got an offense that is now over 4,000 yards rushing on the year. Let your quarterback keep it. Another easy score. Katie bar the door. LC dominating early in this game. Touchdowns tonight brought to you by Allen Davis Insurance, your solutions provider specializing in auto home business insurance and more. The extra point is good. 14-0, Liberty Center on top. We'll take a break here on WOSN. A nine-play, 30-yard scoring drive has given Liberty Center a 14-0 lead. Start with that 20-yard punt. As uh, Tiger fans, oh, we got a little beach. Can't tell them it's cold outside. A little beach ball action going on out there. <laughs> Last person and Liberty Center, turn the light out tonight, will ya? Which they are partying up, rightfully so. They're dominating this game. Talk to our radio friends from uh, the Radio crew and Napoleon covering Liberty Center. We were told that the uh, last person in Liberty Center left around 3 o'clock this afternoon. Kickoff fielded at about the 6-yard line. It is A.J. Hagelberg that will get that one. And it will be deep field position for the Cavs as they will run play number seven of the night here with 316 to go in our opening half. And Austin leg number 53 runs down, makes the tackle. Tried to set up a right hand return, but the ball just hung in the air too long. This Liberty Center special teams under the direction of Paul Amstutz, always ready to make a play. The Cavs trying to make something happen here. Good news is they're gonna have the football to begin the second half, so if you can Get a score here, good throw on uh, first down. Getting that out to the far side, out to A.J. Harlemer. Now it's a play that Liberty Center will let you have, right? We saw it a week ago, they mm -hmm. said, go ahead, throw the short route, we're gonna come up and hit you. But if they're gonna give it to you, take it, especially on first down, it's really the first completion of the night for the Cavaliers. Gain of four is gonna bring up a second and six. Take a look at my notes. Oh, nope, they had a five-yard play. It's the second longest play of the night. Good run's going to bring up third and short here. And the blasting game elects to keep the quarterback run. He's a, you know, the player of the year in the MAC. So one of the reasons he was the player of the year in the MAC because he's the ability to run the football. You wondered if it was going to be impacted because he's carrying that broken leg with him. But on a year, 1,119 yards rushing. Good shot of Coach Otten right there. Is there a nicer guy than high school football than him? What a great guy. You get to spend some time down in cold water. Super nice guy, always fun. And why not? Why not be jovial? Because you're running a great program. Third down, that one's going to be incomplete. The Liberty Center fans enjoy the physical football. Cold water fans might be looking for the flag here. They run it. A linebacker and end stunt inside. Forces a quick throw. Cruz just waits and waits and waits and says, hello, bring on the punt team because I'm going to hit you. Liberty fans sitting right beneath us making some noise as they have forced their third three and out of the night. There's a fan base that likes physical football. It's Liberty Center. A low snap. This one will be fielded. Punt again, hangs up, and it'll head out of bounds. That one will take a Liberty Center bounce and then the hard right turn at the 41-yard line. Another short field for the Tigers, 219 to play before halftime. Yeah, it must be the drop. He's getting a drop wrong on the football because you take a look at the goalposts, the, the flags, not much of a wind push, so it's not like he kicks it in the air and then a gust of wind from Evanston, Illinois pushes it backwards. Just kind of a bad drop and two miss hits, and it's unfortunate because Liberty Center might be closing time with 219. Can you see the flags moving a little bit now. The American flag to our right, which Miles can't see because his view is blocked, has a little bit of movement. Cruz taking an extra minute, make sure he had that ball secured on the first down run. Yeah, two hands on it until you get to the hole, then go ahead and lower the shoulder. And Randy, number of times you ever see a Liberty Center running back not fall forward to complete a run. It just doesn't happen, right? They're always getting extra yardage. And there's that American flag on Veterans Day. Camera crew helping you out, Miles. Somebody listens. Gain of four on the run, second and six. This is going to go for about a yard. 
And they finally played the dive correctly. Don't fly up field, wait for it to come to you. Played really well. Going to be played extremely well inside by Evan Homan and his buddy right there. That is Cody Depwig, number 25. Depwig, a second team All Mac player. Of course, Holman, first team both ways. Third and five coming up here for Liberty Center. This is the give. This is Orr. He's going to be pushed backwards. I'll get him to the 34. Now a decision coming up here for the Tiger. Yeah, finally, Coldwater rallies up to the football, gets him going backwards. Played by Depwig, and then, of course, Obringer brings it and finishes it off. Fourth down. This has been a Coldwater defense who's got to be exhausted. How many plays have they played on defense so far tonight? 100? 120? 130? They have been on the field extensively. Got to come up with a way to, to get a stop here because 14 nothing. you get in at halftime, 14 nothing. you now got a chance, right? 21 nothing here. Eh, then you're really wondering what's going to happen. A timeout taken here. Did not see who it was uh, assessed to. Coldwater will be the one, so they're going to try to save a little bit of time here. Minute six left to go, opening half. See there in our slot welding scoreboard. Now I guarantee somebody in that defensive huddle is saying, watch the ball, watch the ball, because Liberty Center, they're either going to go quick or they're going to try and draw you off, but better yet, they're going to punt the football. This was a spot uh, a week ago where they ran a fake against Liberty Benton for big yardage. Coldwater got to be cognizant of that fact. See the punt team on the field for the Tigers. High snap, able to get that down. This one will be hit. And can the Tiger special teams come up? Nope, that one will be bounced into the end zone. So Coldwater will get it here. Just under a minute left to play before halftime. And thanks to the touchback, they'll get it at their own 20. Now how about the athletic ability of Max Walker, though? The punter, number 67, goes up and stabs it with the left hand. Saves it. That gets over his head. And watch out. There's a Liberty Center band. All smiles and some kind of dance going on there. Remember, that was the same way you danced at your wedding reception, it wasn't was. it? Yeah. It, matter of fact, was. Oddly enough, with the what, Liberty Center band. What do you what do you call that? Uh, I, it doesn't really have a name. <laughs> <laughs> See what the Cavs do here in the final minute blasting game. A little throw to the sideline. Pass is gonna be complete. Good job getting out of bounds. As Curtis Dewar will come up with a catch. And Dewar just kind of stops at the sideline. They ran a wheel inside of him to free him up. Corner bails out, and Liberty Center going to give up short passes with 52 seconds left. Again, a nine is going to bring up second and one. Dewar also got out of bounds, stops the clock. Blazigan looking to throw. This time comes the near sideline, incomplete. Trying to get Har Evan Harlemert. He can't quite get it to him. The second time, Harlemert has had to go off his hands. Oh, gets tipped again by Cruz. Second time that a Liberty Center defender's gotten a hand on Blasting Game's throw like, outside. Can't get to the quarterback. What do you do? You put your hand in the air, left hand to right hand. Rick Schiano from Rutgers always talks about that. Third and one coming up here for Coldwater. Right now, their goal is to try to get the first first down of the night, and they'll do just that. As the carry by, I believe that's that Ebbing, he'll get it out across 30 to 31. So we'll stop the clock momentarily as we take a look at the replay. Almost a tremendous play by Owen Box. Over top to center, he's two gapping it, playing off. Just bench press into center, looking for the running back. Sheds makes the tackle. It's time out on the field. We'll take a break here. Late opening half. Coldwater trying to get back into this one. Coldwater getting back to the line of scrimmage, trying to make something happen here in the final 44 seconds. Picked up their first first down of the night. They've got it their own 31. Quick throw middle of the field. That pass is going to be caught short of the first down. Also in the middle of the field, clock will continue to run as Curtis Dewar will come up with that one. Yeah, because he can't get the first down, the clock will continue to roll. <laughs> Gain of seven is going to bring him second and three. Blazing him. Rolls out, fires. This one is short, his intended target. A.J. Harlem it's another third down coming up here for the Cavs. And kind of a weird throw. This looks like it fell out of his hand. Skipped way in front of his receiver, Harlem Would have been a first down. He'd been able to complete it. Third and three coming up here. As you see on our Swanton Welding scoreboard, clock stop, 23 seconds left to go before halftime. 
Liberty Center. He's got Landon Cruz, number eight, about 17 yards deep. Trying to keep everything in front. Blazing game under a little bit of pressure. Has the man wide open as Evan Arlemer tons of room. He's able to get out of bounds inside the Liberty Center 45 yard line. The Liberty Center brings a backer blitz right there. It's going to be Rents number 19. He's going to run by the quarterback, Blessing Game. Blessing Game moves just a little bit and allows Hollemert to come all the way across the field on the under. And there's nobody there because everybody in the secondary dropped deep, trying to keep everything in front. Pick up a 20 on the pass play. Coldwater will run their first play at the Liberty Center side of the field to Tiger 42. How big would a touchdown be here knowing that they get the football first and second half? Blazing game, pump fake, fires. Wobbler, middle of the field. That one's going to be intercepted. And we'll take a look. Zane Sider will come up with that one. Now, three guys playing deep. Zider's one of them. They're trying to run a pump and go action to the middle of the field. And there's some contact that goes on right there. Both guys looking back for the football. A.J. Harlemert can't come up with it. I'm sorry, Evan Harlemert can't come up with it. No, it is A.J., number six, can't come up with it because of the physicality of Zane Zider. And the Liberty Center happy with a 14 nothing lead with five seconds, so they'll take a knee, and that is how our first half of action will end. Do you have something, partner? Yeah, there's a flag on the field. Way back, this one thrown by the back judge yeah. back at the 32, 33 yard line. Uh, illegal participation by Coldwater. Hey, it's not a bad idea, right? You haven't stopped them all night long. Let's try 12 so, guys instead of 11. So, <laughs> guys in the field. Uh, so they'll move five yards just to allow Liberty Center to take another knee with three seconds to go. There's one of our WOSM banners right behind there. See the Twitter feed on there? You can. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Look at that. That's a beautiful looking banner. That is how the first half will end. Liberty Center with dominance. So there we go. You see there, that's us. 14 of the Tigers at the half. We'll take a break. Second half coming up for you after this on WOSN. Hey, Raider Roberts, Miles Holiday back with you here from Spartan Stadium in Lima. We are at the half. With the Tigers of Liberty Center in front of Coldwater here, 14 0 in this Division 5 Region 18 uh, Regional Semifinals. We take a look at what uh, these two teams are playing for. A winner will move on to the regional final. That'll be held at a site to be determined next Friday night. As, uh, again, currently Liberty Center in front. We take a look at the bottom half of this tough Region 18 bracket. We do know that Elmwood has the lead over Eastwood at the half in that other semifinal. Eastwood Elmwood have met in the regular season as both members of the Northern Buckeye Conference. So Elmwood trying to get a little revenge. And uh, so if these two games hold, we would have Liberty Center Elmwood. You would assume, as said earlier, Bowling Green, Perrysburg, maybe Lake as a uh, potential site for what would be <laughs> right. a uh, clash of the styles. Well, one thing we, the final. One thing we do know that once the site is determined, some people will be happy, some will not be happy. And what a, what a difference in the brackets, right? You got Elmwood and Eastwood who know each other so well, mm -hmm. and then Coldwater and Liberty Center, two teams that are playing each other for the first time in the playoffs. So it has been a stark contrast, but Liberty Center, they uh, seem to be happy with this matchup so far. Have an unbelievable job as I take a look at the, uh, my chart. And Liberty Center started the night a 14-play, 77-yard drive. Matthew Orr getting the 8-yard touchdown run that after holding Coldwater to three plays and a punt, it was a loss of downs inside the 10. Liberty Center with a nine-play scoring drive after again holding Coldwater to a three and out. So 14 nothing. but it was late in that first half before Coldwater got its first first down of the night. Now let's take a look at the uh, three keys, see who's uh, executing extremely well and who's needing some work. Coldwater, number one, hammer to nail. And say they're not being the hammer tonight. They're getting hammered. Number two, scrape over top. It is tough to do because the defensive line is getting pushed into the uh, linebacker. So scraping over top has been tough to do for Sam Oberinger. He's had a good night, but he's made tackles upfield. Number three, let it fly, baby. They did. They had a shot, didn't they? Uh, Braylon Harlemont on the slot fade had the guy beat by about five steps, just a little bit overthrown uh, by Marcel Blassingame, or else that would have been a touchdown. So 
I'd say kind of a 0 for 3 there for Coldwater. What about Liberty Center and their uh, keys for this one tonight? Yeah, bullies must bully. They're taking on all the milk money they want tonight, that's for sure. And make blasting game me move while well, the first play of the game, they get him for a sack in the backfield by Navarre. They've made him uh, very difficult. The thing I really like, though, is they've gotten a lot of hands on passes, too, mm -hmm. on short routes that blasting game is trying to convert. And then no short fields. They have not given Coldwater any short fields, but they have taken advantage of many short fields tonight. It has been utter domination so far for Liberty Center. So three out of three there for Liberty Center. And I want to thank the uh, Coldwater stat guys for giving us some information to tell you. Through the opening half, uh, Liberty Center 37 plays, 184 yards of offense. Coldwater just 16 of 44. That run game, 172 yards for the Tigers. Or 14 carries, 61 yards. Zane Zider 10 for 56. Cruz 10 for 55. So it's been a balanced attack, and it's all been effective. And if you're a Liberty Center fan, it's been an effective Liberty Center half of football. So 14 nothing Tigers, we'll take a break. We'll have the second half for you when we return. Just about ready to go for the start of the second half as officials have their usual meeting. Again, Miles can tell you from experience dealing with the officials that it's to figure out the post-game meal, right? Like, where, where are we going, boys? What's, <laughs> yeah, who's, who's, who's been here before? What's closest? I, I have overheard that many times uh, from the officials. Uh, I think tonight, though, they're probably saying QP, right? You're in Lima. you got to go QP, don't you? Isn't that kind of like a law when you cross in the, the, into uh, city lines? That's what I've been told. Where are we going after the game? I mean, QP, right? Oh, okay. it got to be QP. I if they're open, sometimes they're, they're closed, but it's always good. Hey, the free WOSN Scores app is the easiest way to follow local high school sports. No one covers more schools, more sports, and more scores than WOSN. Search WOSN in the App Store or the Android Play Store. Had it open all night, trying to keep track of what else is going on. The number of football games each week has gone down less and less. Now for about three weeks. Yeah, but the quality of games has gone up, right? There's nobody but good football teams left this deep into the playoffs. Round one, you know, sometimes there's some teams that get in there that you know, might have in the old days not gotten in, but you get to round two and round three, you know it's quality football. So Liberty Center has their kickoff team on the field. Coldwater's ready to go. Waiting for the uh, countdown clock to get it all the way to zero. It's the difference between football and basketball. Basketball officials, they see both teams on the floor. Then they care. Okay, let's, let's put eight on the clock and let's go, but we're going to get that taken care of. It'll be interesting to see what Chip Ott and head coach Coldwater also calls the plays, what they come up with. But whatever best plays he's got on this play sheet, don't save them. Break them out on this opening drive. Wide drive kick is going to be fielded inside the five. And the return will get out across the 25. <laughs> is where the Cavs will start. Is the return taken by A.J. Harlemar. Yeah, A.J. Harlemar kind of saw him shaking his head as he stepped out of bounds because he made a cut. I think he was lamenting the fact that he could have cut it back inside for maybe some extra yardage. <laughs> the Cavs will start with their own 25. Feels a lot more than 14-0. Again, if you get a score and a stop, you're a Cal fan, you're really right back into this one. First down, pass thrown to the sideline. That's going to be complete as they find Evan Harlemer. A fourth down lineman look by Liberty Center on the opening play of the second half. Defense quarter Matt Bryan changing it up a little bit and brought a guy down late to send four at the quarterback. But short route, easy completion. Again, that's something that Liberty Center will give. They'll let you have the five-yard hitch all night long. And they got that one for four. It's going to bring up second and six. Blazing game gets the handoff as Coldwater trying to stretch play. That one's going to be rooted out as the handoff goes to Jack Rory. Excuse me. Now watch outside number five Cruz. He's going to force it back inside. And that's a safety flying up. Unbelievable work. Landon Cruz, number eight, flying up. You start at 12 yards deep in the secondary, and you meet it at the line of scrimmage. That is running to the football. You see why Matt Bryan loves to call defense at Liberty Center. These guys run to the ball. Again, a one on the run. Brings up third and about five from the 30-yard line. 
Glassing game in, a shotgun fakes, rolls. Looking for Saruma, has to get rid of the football as he said, it's incomplete. I thought for a second there was a flag, but it's actually some debris flying. <laughs> Wind has picked up a little bit down on the field. Yeah, he had Dewar open. Dewar kind of lost his footing, so he couldn't throw it, had to hold on to it, and that allowed Liberty Center to rally up. Remember, one of our keys tonight was make sure you move blasting game with the uh, defensive line, and they are getting penetration and putting pressure on blasting game all night long. Punt team for the Cavs out on the field. A punt from inside the 20 yard line. Another wobbler will bounce sideways and head out of bounds. The Liberty Center will start just inside their own territory after forcing the three and out. I'm going to Casey Muller, the play caller and head coach of Liberty Center. How fun is it to call offense when everything you call gets positive yardage? To stay in your base offense, run your trap, run your belly, run your buck sweep, and just keep executing up front. It is easy to play call plays when you have five guys up front to do the job like they do. Tigers will start this from their own 47. See, they lead 14-0 on our Swanton Welding scoreboard. First down run will go positive yardage, continuing to run. Matthew Orr, ball came loose at the end of it. The officials blew it dead, though. Now Coldwater's going to be sick because they come up with a turnover. Let's see if it's actually down. He, Orr keeps driving, keeps trying. The ball's going to be popped out. Yeah, his butt is on the ground. Then the ball comes out. Good work by Downey trying to get the ball out and gets it. Or Holman, rather. Evan Holman, number 72, pulls it out as he's making a tackle. Unfortunately, the butt hit the ground too early. Being a four on the run brings him second and six as Liberty Center gets back just inside Coldwater territory at the 49. Here's Cruz, quickly cuts up field, and he's going to have a first down as he'll get down to the 41. And here's that buck sweep again. Lay's going to come around, lead the way, down block at the play side, and there's nobody there. Cruz gets eight yards deep before he meets Sam Obering, who makes the tackle yet again. Lloyd Busher, number two for Coldwater, tried to get the arm tackle of the uh, shoulders of the Cruz. Cruz able to run right through it. My, you, you can't just shake your head. you got to say something. Well, else. I was agreeing with you because I was going to okay. say, your shoulder pads are only things that stop running backs for Liberty Center. Arm tackles don't get it done. First down from the 41. Back to Orr. He's just going to run sideways and just add an angle, and finally he's going to be brought down after about nine. Now yet another one of these great fullbacks from Liberty Center. Every year they got one. Orr's been it the last two years. You see they're trying to get the ball. Evan Holman tried to get it out again, but two hands by Orr, and then gets to the ground. Running through arm tackles is what Liberty Center running backs do. Second and one. Coming up here for the Tigers. Zyder under center with the fake. Quick throw that's going to be incomplete. In and out of the hands of Colton Cruz, and he knew it. And he had a ham and tree for a seven route, but he couldn't throw it because Dewar is all over it. Number seven covers it extremely well, forces him to throw it short and kind of on the back hip of Cruz, one that Cruz really should have came up with him, but the quarterback Zyder throws it in front. That would have been a big game. The third and one coming up here for the Tigers. Do you know just about everywhere on the field's four down territory. Learned that the last couple of years for Casey Muller. It's not going to matter. His or is going to have the first down. I think his knee might have been buckled on his hesitation mm -hmm. move, but he's able to get to about the 26-yard line. Now watch it get off of the offensive line on the right-hand side, and then the kick out blocked by Cruz. Easy conversion because the attitude of coming off the football exhibited by Liberty Center. Pick up six on the run. It's another fresh set of downs for the Tigers. As they've gotten to the cold water 26 here, down to eight and a half minutes left to go, third quarter. Swat and Welding scoreboard. Cruz bouncing to the outside, and someone's going to reach up and made a touchdown saving tackle. 
As we take a look at the replay, someone just grabbed Cruz by the ankle. Yeah, going to get a kick out blocked by Orr. Napoleon going to lead the way. A little hop step by Cruz, and he's got touchdown in front of him, but it's going to be Blade Busher that knifes him to the ground, just barely gets a shoestring. The pinky maybe got the tackle. Saves a touchdown. And picked up seven on the run. He's going to bring up second and three from the 19-yard line. Play clock is going all the way down. You see it there in red on our scoreboard. A hesitation, trying to take on two defenders is Cruz. Coldwater able to snuff that one out. Yeah, Will Fox comes from the inside, number 64. Working hard for the Cavaliers, makes that tackle. But yeah, some more positive yardage sets up a third and short for Liberty Center. You know, when Liberty Center is on offense, it's kind of like having a running clock. You know, when they score is over 30, it just, uh, clock is always moving because they're always running the football effectively. Third and one from the 17-yard line coming up here for Liberty Center. Split back look once again. This time it's Cruz, the fullback. He won't get touched until he gets to the five-yard line, and it's going to be a first and goal. <laughs> it's kind of like the old veer, right? You don't block the defensive end. Just run the dive to that side. There are so many black jerseys in front of them, they don't even have guys to block. They came off the football extremely well. It's number 63 for Liberty Center in the football game. St Steven Brogan playing at the right guard spot now. Game 13 on the run. It's first and goal from the four. Tigers trying to go up three scores. Send a man in motion. There's Orr, and Matthew Orr will get into the end zone for the second time tonight. Yeah, Orr follows the block of Bockelman, number 75, and he is in the end zone before he's even touched by Sam Obringer. That is an easy score for Matt Orr. Look at the surge, down blocks galore. Look at Hammontree, number 15, down blocking his guy. Of course, Bockelman clears the path. It is tough to play against this offense because they block so well. Touchdown uh, sponsored tonight is Allen Davis Insurance, your solution provider, special, specializing in auto home business insurance and more. As the extra point is good from Rosebrook. Makes it 21 nothing in favor of the Tigers on our Swanton Weldon scoreboard. We'll take a break here at WOSN. 21 nothing. our score, Liberty Center with the lead over uh, Coldwater is, uh, hey, the giveaways have continued. We thought maybe it was just a Liberty Center thing. The cheerleaders are finding more stuff to throw. Can, oh, can we open the balls from last Can we week? open the window? Maybe we can, can they get one? Hey, we're there early in the year. They threw us a t-shirt, remember that? That is true. Yeah. I don't know how they thought we'd fit into mediums. Coldwater trying to get a little creative on the uh, kickoff return. Oh, fake on the uh, sweep as A.J. Harlemert will get this one out to about the 27-yard line. Yeah, it's a smart thing trying to run a fake res reverse because what, even if you don't hand it off on the reverse, what's it do to the guys running down? Well, you got to pause because you got to make sure that it's not a reverse. Slows them down a little bit. Sometimes the defense will overcommit it, and then it gets a seam doing everything they can to try to get back in this football game. Cavs take over at their own 27, now down 21 nothing on our Swanton Welding scoreboard. Scoreboard tonight brought to you by Swanton Welding Company, providing custom welding and fabrication services since 1956. Learn more at swantonweld.com. First down will get to about the 30-yard line. A bunch of black jerseys are there to meet. Flying to the ball, number 58. Klein got there first, and running the football has been tough for cold water night. Heck, any offensive play has been tough for cold doing, water doing tonight. Doing anything, yeah, doing anything on offense has been tough on cold water. Does it actually get that to 31? We'll give him four. Second and six, and the ball just out across the 30 to the 31. Yeah, you got to give a ton of credit to Marcel Blasting game, though. Playing quarterback, playing in this game with a, a leg that yeah. needs to be healed. Broke, broke a bone in his leg about two and a half weeks ago. High arcing throw to the sideline. That is going to be broken up. Good battle there. As Evan Harlemer. 
And I believe that was Jeff Zacharias, number six for the Tigers, in a good one-on-one -on -one battle. Yeah, Zacharias, who we had early in the year, a year ago, kind of struggled learning to play the corner spot. Not this year. He has been absolutely fantastic. Plays the hands of the receiver like you should. Finds him late, uses that sideline as an extra defender. Zacharias has been a great cover corner all year long for Liberty Center. Harlem Bird had a couple of chances at that one after the uh, deflection. Nearly came up with it on the way down. Couldn't hang on, now it's third down. We'll get a flag, it looks like a false start here as things have gone from bad mm -hmm. to worse for Coldwater. Yeah, Liberty Center's defense waving their arms towards the Liberty Center stands, saying, hey, let's get loud. On third down now in about, what do you say, 12 there, partner? Yeah, right around there. Ball tucked just uh, past the yard line at the 25. Great work from our camera crew today. Good to see Tony back with us. As, uh, he'll be working a game tomorrow night. As it's all hands on deck. State soccer, state volleyball playoff football. So Miles and I will get another game tomorrow. There's one chased out. And the throw is going to be picked off. And this one's going to go back for the defensive touchdown. As Colton Cruz does more than just run the football. You knew what to do with it on the pick six. And it's now 27 to nothing, Tigers. Oh, they're celebrating a big way at Liberty Center because they're smelling another round in the playoffs. I see Blasting Game just getting out of the pocket. I think he's trying to throw this away, partner, but the harassment by Owen Box doesn't allow him to get enough arm on it. And Cruz just picks it off an easy, easy peasy. Lemon squeezy, touchdown easy for Cruz on a pick six. And again, our scoreboard, or I'm sorry, our touchdown sponsor tonight, Allen Davis Insurance. Allen Davis Insurance, your solutions provider, specializing in auto home business insurance and more as the extra point is good. And on the Swat Welding scoreboard, Tigers now in front, 28 nothing. They begin to pull away. We'll take a break here at WOSN. Well, we got the little hot dog on the sideline there. <laughs> sneaking, sneaking a quick meal in. <laughs> Poor guy is just enjoying a hot dog, not knowing that he's going to be on TV. Uh, zooming in. George Costanza-like at the U.S. Open. 28-0 Tigers. Not what anyone expected to see here. Two teams with 122 combined playoff wins. Problems with the uh, kickoff, but the officials will uh, have that one as a touchback. So the Cavs will start their own 20. You know is happy about that whistle. <laughs> Curtis Dewar because he didn't have to run that out. And once it crosses the goal line on a kickoff in high school, it is a dead ball mm -hmm. comes out. Uh, I think the only state where they can run it out of the end zone still is Texas. Really? Yeah. So, tell you a little bit about these two schools and what they've done in the playoffs. Coldwater, 86 and 20. All time in the postseason, seven state championships, seven runner ups, 17 times state semifinalist. The Liberty Center, 36 and 20 all time in the playoffs. First down throw is going to be incomplete. One state title, two time runner up, seven time a state semifinalist. Mm, yeah, you go to both these communities, you definitely, as soon as you drive in town, you know how important the game of football is to those communities. Second and 10 coming up after the incomplete pass. Yeah, I didn't think that we'd be getting close to a running clock in this football game, but you know, Liberty Center hanging around that area up 28 nothing. Ken Reeker's gonna have to dust off the uh, favorite graphic of ours. One, he's gonna go maybe a yard trying to get right into that front four of the Tigers. You know, the three guys up front, Box, Navarre, and Bockelman do the job, and it allows the linebackers to fly up. There's Cruz and Klein and Orr. It's just a party at the line of scrimmage for this Liberty Center defense. Third and about nine coming up here. Rough going for a Jack Ebbing. The running back position. It's a rough go for that offense tonight for Coldwater. Yeah, I've had nights like that where you're looking at your play chart and you just – you're hoping something that work will work. 
in the first half, you just couldn't get to any plays. Second half, now it's just, you know, what, what can we find that will work? And they can't even get lined up, so they're going to have to call timeout here. Frustrating for Chip Ott. You know, more confusion. So Coldwater's going to take a timeout here. So that'll give us the opportunity as I uh, pull open the WOSN app. We'll figure out who the Tigers of Liberty Center might see. Take a timeout here on WOSN. Oh, oh, we got well, we, we washed it down. We got the <laughs> bottle of water. <laughs> hey, yeah, you got the hot dog all finished up, and now he's uh, down it with water. Well, at least you know water's healthy, right? That's right. Yeah. Maybe it was one of those healthy hot dogs that he was eating. Drink, perhaps drinking some. Wait for it. Cold water. Ah, some high quality H two O. There we go. See, you're not the only one who gets to make jokes around here. <laughs> Third and nine coming up for the Cavs following the timeout. As Miles had mentioned, this is a night you just want to forget about. Unfortunately, it's going to come here in a regional semifinal with a lot of people watching. This pass is going to be incomplete. I went back to that under concept that they hit right before the end of the first half. Just kind of floats, though, and Harlemont can't get to it. Hummer can't get to it. It was off his hand, and you see the frustration after the attempt. This is not a night that Coldwater anticipated. Punt group for the Cavs making its way back onto the field. That's been a struggle at times tonight as well. This one will hit as they punt it away from Chapa. Heads out of bounds. About the 42-yard line. Now, Liberty Center got close to getting a, a piece of that one. That would have been, uh, yeah, another cherry on top of the Sunday of big plays for Liberty Center had they been able to block that punt. But bad news for the Coldwaters. They got to play defense again against this Liberty Center offense that has just gotten chunk after chunk of yardage on the ground. Tigers will start from their own 42. So after starting their own 23 and their own 31, it's been the Coldwater 30, Coldwater 41, their own 47, now their own 42. And a shotgun, it's been a formation that they run Zyder on. That's exactly what they do here, right up the middle. Plenty of room. He'll have another first down as he'll get into Cavalier territory. On the mark him down at the 46. And you see Bachelman coming around, getting a block, and here's Box, who can't even find anyone to block because it's 12 yards upfield before Curtis Dewar, number seven, gets the tackle on Zane Zider. Picks up 12 in that run. As Liberty Center continues to move forward again, Elmwood surprising Eastwood a little bit at the half. So it looks like. Right now, Liberty Center Elmwood in the Division V Regional Final. Zetter with the ball fake will keep this one himself, and he'll get maybe a yard. Yeah, kind of the same play they just ran, but to the left-hand side and trying to get Morgan, number 63, in front of him. You wonder what's going on with Lay, number 51, who has been the right guard most of the year for Liberty Center. hope it's not a situation where he's dinged up. The Liberty Center team that's been, for the most part, healthy all season long. He's actually down here talking to one of his coaches on the sideline. You can see him through our window. Second down run is going to be Colton Cruz powering forward as every run's gone for about seven, eight yards. It's a run game that averages 7.87 yards per carry on the year. You never think that it might actually go up after tonight. Usually round three of the playoffs, you don't, your stat numbers don't increase a great deal, but it might tonight. Cruz gets eight, he's gonna, or seven, it's gonna bring him third and one. And we're just told they're averaging five and a half yards per carry tonight. Still pretty good, I'd take I'll that. I'll take it, yeah, I absolutely would take it. Third and one, you give it to Matthew Orr. He's going to get the first down as he's finally going to be brought down at about the 32-yard line. So we'll give him about five as that will move forward here as we reach 
about the two minute mark of the third quarter. Clock will stop momentarily while they move the chains. And a tackle again by number 53, Sam Oberinger for this cold water defense. Gotta love watching that guy play. He is just intense no matter what. 53, he's gonna get involved in a tackle one way or another. Man coverage on the outside, trying to get nine in the box to stop the run. And the Turf Monsters made an appearance. This cruise is stopped. Let's see if Depwig gets a hand in there. No, yeah, <laughs> Turf Monster gets it. Depwig's going to be able to slow him down a little bit. But yeah, this kind of Turf Monster gets him. So in, in the tackling stats, do we see Team Monster? Usually what you do is the closest guy to it. Okay. Yeah, he gets credit for it. It's a loss of one, thanks to the turf monster. It's gonna bring him second and 11. It's funny how every turf game you have, someone just falls down. Zider with the ball fake. Talk about the open receiver, it's gonna be incomplete. Chambers turned around and had to go through his hands. I mean, great work by Blake Brusher. He is beat initially, but he plays through the receiver. Makes it difficult, kind of underthrown by Zyder. Gets in the receiver's hands, makes it a tough opportunity by Chambers. Brings up third and 11 now. You know, one of rare formations where they spread you out for Liberty Center, three receivers. Get that quick hitter. Got a man in the middle of the field. Pass is going to be caught. Trying to convert the first down as you go to Aiden Hammondtree, and he'll pick up the first down to the 17-yard line. <laughs> How varied is this offense? You are running at will, and you want to break out something cool? Hey, we can RPO also. At Liberty Center, Zane Sider reads it. Nobody there because the linebacker vacates. Hammond Tree, your big six foot five target. That's easy. Hammond Tree had a big play a week ago for a touchdown. Comes up with another big play right there. Picks up 16 yards there. First down to the 17 yard line. Back to the ground goes the Tigers. As Cruz is going to be brought down this time. Nice job cutting up. Making the stop, Blade Busher called his name quite a bit on defense tonight. Hey, knifed in, didn't he? Blade just comes flying up, makes a tackle right there. We're going to see him. Number two is going to show up late. He better tackle on the perimeter against Liberty Center. Gets his head across, shoots the arms. Is a textbook perfect tackling right there by Blade. It's a gain of about four. It's also going to be the final play of the quarter as Liberty Center will let the final few seconds run off. It's a comfortable lead for the Tigers, looking to add to that lead. See what they do when we come back to start the fourth quarter here on WOSN. 28-0 in our score, Liberty Center with lead over Coldwater as we move into uh, quarter number four. As there's Tony. There's Tony. Good to see you again, buddy. Tony with the vintage WNHO TV26 hat. Must have got that off of eBay. Selling all your old stuff. <laughs> Tony's working uh, with the uh, Golden Bear Sports Network guys tomorrow. Would he, he said, "quote I think we're doing Columbus Grove and somebody." Yeah, unquote. That's a man that's dialed in. That's right. Technically, he's right. It is Grove or somebody. Second down here as the Tigers continue to just add on to that rushing total. <laughs> Well, well, we'll probably see some points tomorrow night in our game, won't we? I think so. Got uh, LCC and Macomb, two teams that can light it up. Go to both practices, and they spend about an hour, hour and 15 on offense, 15 minutes on defense. It tells you tells you what the head coach likes. No, no what their bread is buttered on. <laughs> Third and short coming up here for the Tigers. Tenth play, the drive coming up here. Trying to put this one out of reach. He's going to be Cruz. And Colton Cruz will fight up the middle, and he'll get 
Looks like to about the four, it looks like it's going to be first and goal. Yeah, how about the block by Navarre, number 70, to spring it. Klein, number 58, doing a good job as well. Tanner Klein, kind of the unsung hero of this offensive line. Remember a week ago, he got that block about 25 yards upfield to spring Cruz for the touchdown. And Coach Moeller right there. He did find a problem with the tassel on the on the hat. Is that what you call a tassel? The, uh, Not the poof? The the headphones don't fit as well. you got to find out. That is a good point. It's like Jim Ross with the cowboy hat. you got to find a way to. <laughs> well, this one's been a slobber knocker. And it's going to continue as Orr is going to get into the end zone. And Matthew Orr is going to have an Atlas <laughs> Allen Davis insurance <laughs> touchdown. <laughs> and Matthew Orr, the man that leads this team in touchdowns. Gets yet another one. Watch, his, watch him navigate. Gets a good back block by Klein. Navarre with the trap, and he kind of navigates with the quick feet and the vision through that defense for another touchdown. And again, a touchdown sponsor tonight, Allen Davis Insurance, your solutions provider specializing in auto home business insurance and more. Is Ian Rosebrook on. Attempt the extra point here. Ten and a half minutes left to go in this one. Extra point is up high. Extra point. Wind's not going to affect that one. Well, as he pushes it a little bit to the right, as I stand corrected. Uh, A.J. Hallamert came flying in over that right-hand side. Maybe got in the vision of Rosebrook. Had an opportunity to block it. Kind of forced a quick kick. So 11 plays, 58 yards for the latest scoring drive for the Tigers. Matthew Moore into the end zone for the third time tonight, so 34 to nothing. So that means... Our favorite graphic, isn't it? We now go to the running clock. Look at him, isn't he cute? Got the cute little feet. What size shoes do you think he wears? Uh, those look like about seven or eight. That's kind of weird. His legs are much longer than his arms. Honest right. to God, thought that was Flavor Flav. <laughs> <laughs> All right, greater than 30-point differential after second uh, quarter. Flavor of love time right here. Clock only stops for timeouts. End of quarter scoring in un any unusual delay, which I always ask you, what's an unusual delay, Ricky? What's a usual delay? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, so uh, this thing is going to move quickly. And hopefully, I, I don't like to root for touchdowns, but I want to see cold water at least get one right mm -hmm. here, don't you? As if the game hasn't moved quick enough because of that Liberty Center ground game tonight. We gotta, we gotta give that guy a name, that little clock guy. You mean that's not Flavor Flav? <laughs> you know, I almost said Hootie Who, but that's not him. What, what did Flavor Flav always say? <laughs> that's a good question. Yeah, he always had a, he had a catchphrase. What was did it? Did he? The, yeah, and the gold teeth and the big clock hanging and that great show on VH1, Public <laughs> Enemy. He was a musician? <laughs> Wait, what? I'm sure a lot of our viewers are big Flavor Flav fans. Yeah, who, who's Flavor Flav? He's a return for Coldwater. Good return. As Curtis Dewar trying to find a little bit of running room. He's going to get out to about the 45-yard 40, 40, line to take a look. Well, he returned left for the first time. being trying to go right all night long. Gets some really good blocks right there. A tremendous block on the outside by Cody Depwig springs him loose. He's going to get uh, DDT'd out of bounds by Cruz. Got up a little bit slow, but it's well worth it. He gets a return out to the 45. It's a good field position for the Cavs, trying to dig out from this one. 34 0. They trail 10 minutes to go. Looks like their season is going to end here. Another good year for Coldwater. 11 in 2. Handoff. That one's going to go for a loss. Reading that play. That's box number 62. You're going to see him gonna blow up the lead block. Comes down and just gets those giant arms around the ball care and kind of forklifts him to the ground. The human forklift, Owen Box, yet again. Loss of a yard to the 44. It was uh, Cody Depwig trying to go one-on-one -on -one with Box. Did not end well for him. Backs up the Cavs to the 44. Blazing game, have to get rid of this one in a hurry. Gets it out to Ebbing. Ebbing able to get back maybe a couple yards past the original line of scrimmage. Yeah, I, I, wanna, I wanna show this one again. Can we see a replay of this one again? Because this is fantastic. Watch 62 pass rush. Owen Box right there, doesn't get to the quarterback. 
most defensive linemen are just like, eh, I'm done. No, not him. He runs all the way back upfield and tries to get into the tackle. That is great effort by number 62, Owen Box. That's how you lead by example. Held it to a three-yard gain on the pass play. Sets up a third, and we'll call it eight, from the 47. Blasingame rolls, fires. That one's going to be incomplete. That's Chapa number 16 for Liberty Center is the one racing into your screen. Knock that one away and sets up a fourth down. Yeah, good coverage. Just keep your eyes on the backfield. Quarterback rolls to your side, so you know the receiver's going to make an outbreaking route. Chapa plants that foot in the ground, makes a play on the ball. It looks like Coldwater will punt once again. But maybe from midfield, think about going for it here. Nothing to lose down a handful of touchdowns. Time starting to run out. Twin safeties back deep for Liberty Center. Didn't put a lot of pressure on the last punt. See what they do here. Do send a few back. As this one will hit at the 20, take a bounce. Chap is going to let this one go as the ball continues to roll. Coldwater wasn't quite ready for it. They're going to down this one inside the one. It's Ethan Elander, sophomore number 11, is the one able to put that down. And now Liberty Center will have to go the length of the field. Well, if you have an offense that is built for this type of situation, it's Liberty Center, right? Uh, great. Best punt of the night for Coldwater, unfortunately, comes when they're down 34 0. First time that this Liberty Center team has really been backed up inside their own territory. This is the challenge for Liberty to run out the clock. Well, sure, right? You, you, you always, coaches always call it the four minute offense, right? Mm -hmm. With Liberty Center with 731 left in the clock's running, it's kind of like the four minute offense for them. Looks like they got a new signal caller in. Is it Amstutz that's in, number 12? Does look like a few changes here. So Landon Amstutz. Missed most of the year because of an injury. Takes over at quarterback. Handoff here on first down as he's got some new mates with him in the backfield. Looks like Waylon Rents, sophomore, will get the call here, number 19 for the Tigers. Yeah, Rents does a nice job of spinning out of the block of Hammond Tree. Kind of ran into Hammond Tree, felt it, and then a little spin a Rooney to get positive yardage. Gets them out of the shadow of their own end zone. Bring up second and five from the six yard line. Quick pitch again as they try to go to the near side of the field. Now cutting up field again is Rents. He'll get to about the 10. Looks like he'll be about a yard shy of the first down. If you're cold water, get a stop here, force a punt. It's going to be tough, though, third and short. I want to see Coldwater have yet one more opportunity to get some points on the board. It'll be important for Marcel Blassing game after what he's been able to do this year. Third and one coming up here for Liberty Center from the 10-yard line. And so to give to the second man through as uh, Trenton Cruz. See some action. He'll get the first down as he's able to get this out to about the 12-yard line. Like no fun to play on the defensive interior against Liberty Center because you're going to go off of down block after down block all night long. If you're an A or B gap defender, your inside or outside shoulder is going to be thumped on as offensive linemen keep blocking down on you all night long. They give him three yards out to the 13. It's a first down. Clock a factor here on the Swanton Welding scoreboard down to five and a half minutes to play. Can't imagine to see anything too fancy out of Liberty Center here. Now stay in their base offense. Just run inside, trap, run lead, run buck sweep. He's getting the call again as Trenton Cruz. So he'll move the pile about six yards or so out across the 15, call it about the 16 yard line. Three, second and seven. Say second and about seven coming up here. The Tigers stay with those split backs. And again, that first man through. Big gain out for another first down to the 25 yard line. Here, 
Bears. They go back to Waylon Rents. Give him nine yards out to the 25. As Tigers continue to add an impressive total on the ground. Two hundred and ninety one yards rushing. Coming off, they ran for three hundred and two a week ago against Liberty Benton. And now they'll add it and get up over near the three hundred yard mark. Cruz will get five to the thirty yard line. It looks like some more fresh bodies continue to come in for the Tigers here. Second and a uh, short five, long four. The ball just outside the 30-yard line. Amstutz, a little problems with the snap. He's going to keep this one himself. And it looks like he might get back to the line of scrimmage. Might get about a half a yard. Might move him out to about the 31. Trouble on the rollout. It's going to bring up a third down. Third and about four coming up here for the Tigers. Again, they go back to the trap. Coldwater able to read that one. It looks like a fourth down will be coming up here. Some new running backs continue into the lineup here. This time is Thomas Moeller. New him a couple of yards to the 33. It's going to be fourth and about two. We'll see the punt team for the Tigers out onto the field here. Two minutes to go. As Max Walker will step into this one. Good end over end punt. Take a bit of a bounce. Continue to roll. And this will be down as it finally will settle at about the 22 yard line. That does momentarily stop the clock here. The minute 39 to go. As there is our Miles Holiday making his way down onto the field. I don't know if we can name just one dynamic dude. We might have a group of them coming up for you as part of our quick post game. trying to get the correct unit onto the field. Send some new guys out. So I'll let the see okay. So being told that he's gonna let the seniors come off the field here, so. can tell you Elmwood with a 28-7 lead in the fourth so it is looking closer and closer like Liberty Center Elmwood be the matchup next week in a regional final and we'll know for sure late in the weekend as to where that will be and a good look here for the Coldwater Cavs as that group of seniors will make its way off the field one more time.
following the uh, timeout. Start the clock once again here. Good run on first down as some of the underclassmen from Coldwater making their way into the lineup. So we see Balin uh, Blockberger, sophomore, number 15, making his way in at quarterback for the Cavs. Trying to shuffle some linemen off the field as well. Handoff here. As Kenny Bailey Jr. fullback will see some action with the football. Coldwater doesn't need to run one more play, and it doesn't look like they have any interest in doing so. The final few seconds will run off the field. It's going to be a shutout victory for Liberty Centers. They'll move in once again to the regional final as the Liberty Center Tigers blank the Coldwater Cavaliers tonight 34 to nothing. We'll take a timeout. We'll go down on the field with Miles Holiday and see about our dynamic dude, maybe dudes of the game, when we return here at WOSN. 34 to nothing, our final score. Liberty Center gets the win over Coldwater, so the Tigers will now meet Elmwood in the regional final next week. We head down on the field where Miles Holiday has caught up with at least one of our dynamic dudes, and he might be joined by some friends of his in just a few minutes. Uh, Tanner Klein, uh, the center for the offensive line. Now, Tanner, you're going to be our dynamic dude at WSN and Mini Helmet. You get that uh, for the player of the game. However, you have to share it with the offensive line. Okay. Is that okay? Absolutely. Uh, all right. So Tanner's going to share it with the offensive line. You're going to represent them. You guys are our dynamic dude. Tanner, uh, over 300 yards rushing. How are you guys able to get that done against a really good defense tonight? Uh, really, we just play as a team, and uh, we're all on the same page, and it all starts at practice, and uh, the scout team really gave us a good look this week, and uh, I think they really prepped us this week. Yeah, running the football is what you guys do best. The five guys up front work so well. As a center, how's it important for you to communicate to the guys? Oh, absolutely, and the, the boys across from me, they, uh, they make it really easy because they communicate right back, so it's really easy on me. This was a game that was built up between two teams with great tradition. A lot of talk about the great tradition at Coldwater. Well, how about your tradition at Liberty Center? It feels like it is something that you guys really wanted to step forward and show that, hey, there was two great programs here tonight. Absolutely. Coldwater was a great program, and Liberty Center is built on team first, so I think that really helped us out this week. Great job tonight. How good does it feel to keep moving forward? Oh, it feels great, especially with the brothers beside me. Congratulations, good luck. Make sure you share that mini helmet now, okay? Absolutely. All right, our dynamic dude of the night, Tanner Klein. So again, Liberty Center rolls over Coldwater, 34 nothing. So Tigers, again, back into the regional final. It's where uh, they reached a year ago before uh, falling to a carry for the right to move on to the final four. We want to thank everyone made our night possible here at Lima Stadium, starting with John Sell for uh, Lima Senior. He's in uh, charge of uh, all the media. Of course, we can't thank Tony and Curtis working the cameras enough, and of course, our producer and director, Mr. Ken Rieger. So 34 nothing, our final Liberty Center will get the win. Tigers set up with Elmwood in the regional final next week. So for my partner, Miles Holiday and our entire WOSN crew, I'm Randy Roberts. Thanks for watching, everyone.